ವರ್ಣಿವೇಶರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ಥಿ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲ್ ಔಟ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಟು ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜೆ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರು ಜೈನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ವಾಸ್ ಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಸುರಾಕಾಚರ್ ದರ್ಬಾರ್ ಇನ್ ಲೋಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಅಸೆಂಬ್ಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಸಮ್ ವೈಲ್ ದ ಶಿವಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಭಗವದಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ದೇ ಬೋತ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಅ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಟು ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಇನ್ ರಿಪ್ಲೈ ನೆರೇಟೆಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಓನ್ ಡಿಯೋಟೀಸ್ and one after one he narrated many uh, stories or we can say the incident from many devotees life what they have done for bhagwan and sant as they understood firmly the complete glory and greatness of bhagwan and sant meaning they have the faith in the form of bhagwan as well as in the sant and that is why they have done some extraordinary or we can say outstanding work for bhagwan and sant and now today bhagwan swaminarayan himself is going to narrate the stories from the life of rana rajgar golida is a small village in kathiawar meaning in saurashtra meaning we can say the southern part of gujarat four brahmin brothers named bhim vasram ragav and rano live there they belong to rajgar brahmin community and came from a virtuous family their father had completed a pilgrimage from jagannath puri to dwarka by prostrating all the way not by walking but while prostrating from Jagannath Puri to Dwarka their father this four brothers father he had performed such kind of pilgrimage and as their father he lived a uh, totally pious and we can say a very spiritual life because he had intense desire to attain god realization and their father had also met raman and swami and after meeting raman and swami he disclosed his heart towards swami understanding that this raman and swami is one of the great sant and he revealed his own desire to meet bhagwan then raman and swami say ultimate liberation uh, ultimate uh, liberation cannot be attained without the contact of god in the human form then the brahmin the father he asked swami so me how is it possible because now i am old and it is not i cannot believe that i can have a chance to meet bhagwan face to face in human form then swami told that don't worry about that you you will not but your sons they will definitely get darshan of bhagwan in human form and they they all become bhagwan's devotee and because of their merits you will attain the same attainment meaning you are uh, you will also attain the ultimate liberation and you will be sent to the bhagwan's divine abode aksardham then years later sriji maharaj went from some other village to golida and at the very first darshan of maharaj these four brothers these four brahmins they overflowed with love for maharaj as if they had always known him they invited maharaj to their house and lovingly served him a meal because they are brahmins so they can make a meal for bhagwan or santo and as according to their custom they made a uh, 
different different kinds of meals for Bhagwan and Santo and these four Brahmins they offer food to Bhagwan as well as to Santo. And after eating meal, Bhagwan also become very pleased upon those four brothers. And in turn, the all Brahmins they decided to become a satsangi and they they were initiated into satsang fellowship by Bhagwan himself by giving them some little water in their palm and giving them uh, niyams not to eat meat, not to eat, not to drink alcohol, not to stealing, not engage in uh, in adultery and not eating outside food. In this way, Bhagwan gave him the niyams of satsang and they were initiated after giving, uh, uh, after wearing the kantis from Bhagwan Swami and himself. And now they become a satsangi. And gradually, uh, after getting satsang, or we can say keeping a firm company with Santo, they all Brahmin, Bhim, Vasram, Raghav, and Rana, these all four brothers, they become a staunch devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And they greatly pleased, uh, greatly pleased with them. Sri Maharaj also offered them ask for a boon then the four brothers they did not have any kind of worldly desire as they have a virtuous father so from their father they got uh, such kind of behavior and we can say virtues in their life that they did not have any desire for enjoying worldly pleasures and that is why they ask while folding hands Maharaj we do not want anything because as you a Bhagwan in the human form we attain so we do not have any other desire to attain and that is why if you become really pleased upon us then please grant us the boon that Yam should never enter our village or its outskirts to fetch any soul to the hell. Then Maharaj become extremely pleased as the four brothers they ask such boon from Bhagwan. So Maharaj said, as you don't have any worldly desire, so I grace all of you with this boon that never any attendant of Yam, meaning any servant of Yam, or we can say Yamduts, never enter in your village. Slowly and steadily their whole village was drawn into satsang, meaning each and every family of that village, they all become satsangi. At the time of, uh, but there was one man who was very malicious towards satsang. So there is only one person in the village, he was not ready to become a satsangi. And instead, following the good and righteous path, he many times disturbed the other devotees. Not only that, but he even speak ill of satsang, even Bhagwan, Santo, and the devotees. So at the time of his death, the servants of Yam came to take him to hell. But on reaching the outskirts of the village, they began to experience burning sensations. Some of the Yamduts warn the divine influence of Bhagwan Swamaran prevails in this village. We will not be able to enter the village. But others said, There is nothing wrong in taking away an evil man. So, as the party of Yamduts they try to enter the village, they experience some sensation of burning. Why? Because the, where it is the rules of the scriptures then that where is the devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan or the Sant of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and whoever even chant Bhagwan Swaminarayan's holy mantra meaning Swaminarayan, Swaminarayan then any evil spirit or Yamduts meaning we can say like ghost or any such kind of evil spirit or Yamduts they all they experience like they were burning. So they can never touch 
a devotee, they can never come near to devotee or sant or even one who chant Bhagwan Swaman's name. So this is what Bhagwan's divine power prevails on the earth, even today also. So this Yamdus, one of them, he said, we cannot go, we, can, we should not go inside the village, otherwise we will burn out. But some others said, no, we are not touching any devotees of Bhagwan. We are going to take an evil man from this village. And that is our duty. Then, as they tried to enter the village, all the four brothers took turns to guard the town. Today it was Bhim's and Rana's turn. They saw the servants of Yam and told them to go back. Okay, according to the Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine grace, these all four, four brothers, Bhim, Vasram, Raghav and Rana, these all four brothers, they got a divine vision so that they can even see the Yamduts. Or not only Yamduts, but also some ill spirits like goats. They can see. And in the same way, Bhim and Rana and Vasram and Raghav, they, uh, they split it in two groups. One in, in one group, Bhim and Rana, and other group, Vasram and Raghav. So, one after one, they have a turn to, uh, to guard the village. And that is why once upon a time, Bhim and Rana, they, they were guarding the town, they were walking on the outskirts of the village. And in that time, they saw the Yamduts, they were entering the town. And so they instructed them not to enter the town and go back to their home, meaning in Yampuri. But the Yamduts did not heed their warning. So the two brothers chased them out with sticks. So Bhim and Rana, they both were very brave devotees of Bhagwan Swami and that is why on the this is the con con the greatest contrary situation because on the other hand in the world any other person who has their uh, ending time of life and if that person is not a devotee of Bhagwan and that is why he had not performed a good deed throughout his life and that is why if some Yamduts came to take him in into the hell so at the time if he had a vision to watch that Yamduts, then that person, even only by watching the Yamduts, he cannot remain alive because he had too much pain. When one see the Yamduts, he definitely feared tremendously. And on the other hand, here, these two devotees, they have a divine vision and they watch, they even watching Yamduts. And even they are talking with Yamduts that please don't enter into our village. The Yamduts said, no, we have, we have to perform our duty. We have to take the evil man from your village to the hell. Then the Bhim and Rana, they said, no, this is our village. The Yamduts said, no, you have to take, you have to safeguard your own house. But you are not allowed to safeguard the whole village. This is an evil person and we have to take its soul into hell for the punishment. Then the Bhim and Rana, they both were very brave duties of Bhagwan Swami and they have the strength because of not their own but because of Bhagwan Swami and his refuge. They believed that we are the devotees of Supreme Lord Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So the Yamdus would never do anything to us. And that is why they have the long stick in their hands. They try to beat the Yamduts. And 
in this way they chase them out with the sticks but because of the hitting of the stick one of yamdut's teeth broke down at the same time and the all the other yamdus they run away and after this incident this bhim and rana they took a big sword a big teeth of uh, yamdut they carried there because it was very heavy and they turned into into the whole village so that the other villagers they can see that see the power of bhagwan swami nar and after this incident the other devotees and santo whoever knew about this incident they all become pleased as well as they all understood the more glory of bhagwan swami nar and after that many years passed raghav and vasram they wanted to become sadhus but their mother refused then rana explained to his mother please permit my brothers to become sadhus do not worry i'll serve you his mother finally consented and both the brothers were initiated as sadhus they were renamed as raghavanand swami and viswatmanand swami both were known as jam tagda sadhus because they have uh they have chased out the yamdus from their village and that is why the, all the santos and devotees in our satsang they known them both this raghavanand swami and viswatmanand swami as jam tagda sadhus as they had driven away the servants of yam sometime later rana fell ill and was on his deathbed his mother asked who will look after me now i'll come to take you to dham 12 days from now rana promised his mother so when rana fell ill after becoming a sadhu of his brothers meaning after becoming a sadhu of uh, vasram and rago after some times rana fell ill and now his ill his ill was very serious and now it is near to he he is very near to his death and then his mother asked who will look after me now as you are not now going to bhagwan's dam then who will take care of me then rana said don't worry about that mother i'll come to take you to dam 12 days from my death and in this way uh, the next day rana said sri ji maharaj came with a celestial viman meaning we can say a plane uh, to take him to his abode and rana asked everybody those who want to come to dam with me please become ready then no one but his son got ready and went to aksidam with his father meaning with rana on the 12th day rana came with mahara to take his mother to aksidam many saw this divine vision and were amazed that because no one in this kaliyug no any other god come to take his duties to his dam and on the other hand in bhagwan swami narayan's case even today bhagwan swami narayan at the end of the devotee's life he himself or along with his devotees or santo he himself came on this earth and took his devotees to his aksardham such was rana rajgar's faith and courage sri ji maharaj had has even praised rana rajgar in vachanamrut in loya so this is what rana rajgar's story bhagwan swami narayan had narrated in the vachanamrut third of loya for he has such kind of faith in the form of bhagwan and in the form of sant first he along with his other brothers did not ask any worldly things from maharaj after that getting a boon from maharaj that the yamdus never enter to your village they all fought with the yam uh, the yamdus and not only that but after that 
even when Raghav and Vasram they wanted to become a sadhu and the mother did not ready to get the permission to her two sons then at the time rana himself make his mother get ready to give permission to other sons to become a sadhu not only that but even at the end of his life at the time at the last time of his life he even told his mother that i'll take care meaning i'll take you to aksardham after uh, after the 12th day of my death not only that at the time when bhagwan sonan came to take him into aksardham he even announced who were present were there he said now maharaj is here who will come with me to aksardham become ready and as his son become ready to go to aksardham then he too his son with maharaj to aksardham and even after 12 day he again came with maharaj to take his mother to into aksardham so this is what this is all strange what we have seen in the stories rana rajgur and other three brothers they, he had uh, the strength they attained that only because of their faith in the form of bhagwan otherwise one cannot attain such kind of strength without faith in bhagwan or in the form of sant after that bhagwan swamina himself narrated the another story of the old lady of the village kathlal so a brahmin woman by the name of rambai lived in a village called kathlal she had the form faith and deep devotion towards sri ji maharaj one day she was drawing water from the town well and sri ji maharaj with his group of saints and devotees arrived there Maharaj was passing through the outskirts of the village because he Maharaj wanted to go the, to the another place another village and so Rambai approached Maharaj and asked him to sanctify her home she told Maharaj that his holy presence in the village would inspire many people to join the satsang fellowship Rambai was alone in alone duty in the village and that is why she desired to spread satsang throughout the village so that the other villagers also got a chance to enjoy the divine bliss in aksardham after that day not only that but while living they all get a pleasure and living a happy life and that is why he requested maharaj maharaj please sanctify my home so that uh, the other villagers can have a chance to have uh, to have darshan of yours and your santos and because of that merit they will become a uh, satsangi and as they become satsangi they even attain the ultimate liberation then but the uh, uh, the situation was that sri ji maharaj was in a hurry to reach vartal with his group of saints and because of an upcoming upcoming uh, uh, upcoming festival so maharaj told her it will not be possible this time but he'll come in the future so mara denied to uh, to come to the home so mara said uh, i have to reach today itself to vartal and so i cannot waste my time if i came to your village then the other devotees not in this village but the next other villages they also uh invited me into their homes and if i sanctify all devotees home then i'll not reach vartal today so if it is possible then in return i'll definitely come to your home but not this time hearing this rambai did not argue because he had a faith in the form of bhagwan one who has faith he had no question at all in the words of bhagwan one who has faith in the sant he had no any single question in the words of sant 
So Rambai had unflinching faith in the form of Bhagwan, and that is why she understood that whatever Bhagwan is doing, it is definitely and undoubtedly proper for all. That is good for all, and that is why she did not make any kind of arguments. And ideal duty should always comply with the wishes of the Lord. Rambai was an ideal duty of Sriji Maharaj, and instead of bringing Sriji Maharaj to her village, she brought the village to Sriji Maharaj. How she brought the village to Sriji Maharaj? It is not in that case, but she put down the water pot that she had filled from the well and offered water to Sriji Maharaj and his saints with great affection. Then she requested Maharaj to dip his feet into the water pot. Sriji Maharaj asked, What will you do with this water? Rambai replied, I'll drink a little bit and pour the remaining water into the village well. There are no duties in the village, but whoever knowingly or unknowingly drinks water from this well will become a duty and worship you. Rambai said, Maharaj, I want to make all, the, all these villagers your devotees. And that is why I invited you to sanctify my home. Otherwise, I will not have any other desire. And now, if you are in a hurry, then I have this water from my village well. And if you drink some water from this, your santo would drink some water from this. And because of this marriage, this water becomes sanctified. And if you dip your foot in uh, if you dip your feet in th into this water this water pot and i drink some water as your prasadi and after that i pour the remaining water into the our village well so that whoever drink the water knowingly or unknowingly they all would become devotee because they have uh, they have your prasadi even unknowingly but they become devotee one day this is my faith in you then knowingly uh, knowing her pure intentions sriji maharaj complied with her wishes and dipped his lotus feet into the water pot then he left for vartal with his group of saints then rambai's joy had no bounds she drank some of the water and then poured the remaining water into the public well even today, the residents of the village who drink the water from this well become devotees of Sriji Maharaj. Sriji Maharaj has inspired many women devotees who did not seek material wealth or pleasure, but played for the happiness of all. So even today, the village Katla parted into two parts. Because at the time of Sriji Maharaj, the one part used the one well for the water, the other part of the village, the villagers used the another well for fetching water from it. So what happened? Rambai poured the sanctified water in only one well, and that is why whoever drink water from that well, they all become devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So today, we can see in the village that half a village the, ha the villagers from uh, the half village, they all become devotees of Bhagwan Swami and they worship Bhagwan with full devotion. On the other hand, the other devotees, uh, the other villagers, those who did not drink water from the, the, the sanctified well, they did not become devotees. But in this story, we can understand that whoever had whoever had faith in Bhagwan or his son's form, then he can do something for satsang. Meaning he can even inspire others to become a satsangi. Or not only that, but that devotee also become a mediator to inspire more devotees, to engage or we can say uh, developing faith in the form of Bhagwan and Son. When 
the last time came of this rambai and she was fell ill and now she declared that maraj would come the next day to take me into his akshardham so her husband he said i i am not duty and after your departure what will i do because i throughout my life i did not worship bhagwan so what will happen to me then this rambai said don't worry about that only understood that i am if you are not a devotee then doesn't matter but i am a devotee of bhagwan swami and that is why if you have you you have eaten throughout your life food prepared by me and offer to bhagwan swami narayan so you definitely will attain ultimate liberation after your death so this is only because of faith in the form of bhagwan otherwise one cannot have such kind of trust or one cannot have such kind of faith so that one can say the other that who you uh touch me that uh, uh, attain the ultimate liberation or whoever uh, eat the prasad from uh, prepared by me then that become a devotee or that uh, attain ultimate liberation one cannot say without the faith so ramba had faith in the form of bhagwan and that is why she herself as well as the other villagers also attain the ultimate liberation of and not only that but they all become devotees of bhagwan swami narayan and they enjoy a very devout and pious life in this world in this way bhagwan swami narayan narrated these all stories in this vachanamrut and this is the last story of uh, the old lady of kathal bhagwan swami narayan had narrated in the third vachanamrut of loya in this way the another moral we can get from this bhagwan's incident that even though he is the supreme lord he himself narrated to other to others the stories of his own devotees so we can get a lesson from this bhagwan's incident that even bhagwan can narrate the stories of his own devotees he himself narrated the glories of his own devotees then why we are not so we should also whenever we have a chance we have to narrate or we even our own mind we have to one after one uh uh one after one we have to recall the divine incident of the devotee's life or we can say the glory of devotees so that uh recalling or reminding many times the virtues life of a devotee we can also get the same virtues in our life and by getting such some uh, devotional virtues in our life we will get a place of bhagwan bhagwan will become place upon us and by pleasing bhagwan and puja guru ji if we definitely attain the peace divine while living not only after the death but while living we attain the divine peace what the muktas experience in the divine abode akshardham shri ganesh maharaj ni <laughs>